Got a skins game going on here with Weber, Duke, and Tommy Jones. A whole lot of carryovers. And Norm Duke took over the lead on this squad. 246 game one, Weber 208, Tommy Jones 186. So Norm Duke plus 670. Tackett Beasley Sterner with 267. Put them all together in the combined squad. And right now, Sean Lavery Spar is the last man inside the number if it ended right now. But we know there's six more games to be added to these totals. Much smoother downline reaction for Matt O'Grady on that shot. Well, it was fun while it lasted. Back to my hole. Interesting to get a take from one of the ball reps and why we're seeing everything just so angular right now. How about that? Craig, you won't believe me, but I predicted that in my head. He would make that and shoot 278 just for you. Well done, Jeff. Good call. Thank you. Five for Pete Weber. What's up? Just happened to catch Brett Spangler walking by. We were just talking here, watching this first game, and the, everything seems to really be angular. I mean, a, a lot of dead left. What, what's happening out there? Um, a lot of the guys were talking about just feeling more oil in the front of the lane. And, uh, you know, it's easier to get the ball behind it when there's when there's more push, especially when there was more friction in the front yesterday than there was on the first day of competition. So, you know, they, they kind of got used to being able to be a little more aggressive at the foul line. You know, at the fronts with a little bit of friction might correct a little bit of his, their trajectory issues. Those trajectory issues show up big time when there's more oil in the front. So balls get off line easier. Um, you know, you, you get one there quick and never hooks so then you know the next one the ball's three inches further from your hip at the bottom of the swing you know it, it, it's it's interesting i mean um but no, is that just because we're we've, we, we've oiled now what you know a dozen times this week it just gets flatter and flatter or what, you know what i mean uh, it's 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 hard to say because honestly like the the guys this morning felt more friction in the front of the lane so uh, you know it, it, it's just every time you run the lanes, you kind of have to come in and treat it like it's a new tournament, you know? You, you drill balls based on what you've seen, based on where you think it might go, 
but ultimately like my gosh it's it's just it's going to be different every time it's it's part of the part of the learning curve for people who come out and start to bowl regional start to bowl national events that you know it, when you have success your first couple of times you know you come out the next day or to the finals if you're bowling a regional and and very seldom do people have success the next day because they, they just play different and you want them to play like they did when you were striking uh, well, you know, the, the pace might be a little slower game one. I know that the first few pairs, those guys scored a little lower. But they'll, uh, for the most part, they'll figure it out. They'll, uh, they'll get it back on track. I know, I know Brad really struggled the first game, and he's off a little slow this game too. But, uh, you know, he, he, um, he missed the head pin a couple times in practice and got like four or five through the middle a well, couple of times. With the day he had yesterday, he was hoping to have him be exactly the same today. Uh, right. But obviously, the learning curve to understand that. Absolutely, and I mean, you know, he had a little bit of that last week and, uh, you know, came in, it really bombed him the first two days, came in the third day, he ended up cashing, but really, really struggled, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just a hard thing to really come in and say, okay, it's a new tournament today, you just have to figure out how to, how to strike during this tournament today, and, uh, you know, he, he's, he's going to get there, he's clearly an incredible player, the, Brad has improved more than more than anybody I can think of on tour across the last 18 months. I mean, he he's he's consistently making cuts and making all of the cuts at the majors. It's pretty pretty amazing. So what we have to know for Brad Miller before we let you get back to work on and keep you occupied. What's with the gallon of water? Brad's a Brad's a wellness geek, man. He just uh, you know when we were in when we were in Vegas for the for the Open. He led like a uh, led a player hike, and he he's constantly he feels like this is a sport, so it's his job to be an athlete. And uh, you know that's that's one of the things that we really believe in, uh, that we really encourage. And motive, honestly, is that we 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 make sporting goods, and so like we we want our, our players to be athletes. And uh, you know, Brad's Brad's just a guy. He was a soccer player, and you know he's he's always going to try to be fit and you know uh, there are studies that say that your brain functions better when it's well hydrated so why not just carry around a gallon jug of water right sure why not yeah yeah we were wondering we've been watching brad all week long kenner on that jug and uh, and having a great week maybe we just thought it was a secret potion or something <laughs> so. yeah no fairy dust in there or anything he's right. just uh he's just a fitness guy all right thanks brett we appreciate it thanks and, fellas uh, good luck out there today with the guys yeah. So no secret potion in Brad Miller's water jug. We can't market that. Pete Weber has something working there. Front seven. Secret potion is two atoms of hydrogen for every one atom of oxygen. H2O. But it, interesting to hear that from Brett, though, and, and how do you take it as a different tournament every day. And even the players here at this level, these are all 52 of the 66 players with national titles. And you, you see some up and down blocks. Where you would expect it to just be consistent all across the board. And, you know, that just doesn't happen because this is very tough, very demanding. A lot of factors come into play here. Yeah, and even as some, something as seemingly simple as today, they're bowling with new squads. So they divide up the field, and suddenly you're not bowling with the same people you bowled with the two previous days. So the lanes will break down differently. Just that's one element. And that's not a simple element to navigate either. No, not at all. That invisible puzzle out there that you can't see, that oil pattern just changes depending on who's on the lanes with you and before you. And even on the mental side, right? If you spend a couple days bowling with... Uh, couple good buddies you know, maybe you come in next day and you're all somebody you might not know you don't have that jovial atmosphere that you might have so you're not quite as relaxed or something as you might have been the day before so a lot of different factors come into play to be successful out here on the pba tour a whole lot different than your uh, thursday night bowling league back home on the conditions the atmospheres and everything else that happens Tom Duke, all strikes except for that 4-10 he converted and a 10-pin for Norm Duke. Gave that one just a little bit too much room. You see him, the arm might have kind of snuck outside on him a little bit and didn't get as much on it. Always tinkering there with Norm after shots, pre and post shot routines.
Duke standing left, pointing the feet at the 10 pin. Almost never misses. Well, Marshall Holman mentioned yesterday that Norm is one of the best all-time spare shooters, and he's showing it today. He just goes dead straight. He doesn't carry a spare ball. He just flattens everything out. Take those variables out of play. Go. Pete, Pete Weber, Weber. Front nine. Yeah, one three hundred on a week. Matter great he's already got two. Weber trying to join him. Gentlemanly move by Tommy Jones there taking the re-rack waited for Norm to release his shot before he hit the button. Something that goes overlooked sometimes I want to point that out. Not overlooked this time Tommy Jones well done. Well that 3-7-10 was the only blemish on the scorecard for Matt O'Grady so far here in game two. Tommy Jones that one's not coming back. And he's a guy that can make the 7-10. Yeah. Yeah, O'Grady, the 3-7-10 that he beautifully missed. If you can call a miss beautiful. Sliding the ball right between the 3 and the 10. And Jason Sterner here. And then haven't seen a 7-10 converted in a while, actually, on extra frame. I'd like to see one. How about Tommy Jones right now? Yeah, would it be the gentlemanly thing to do? It would be. He was nice and armed. Duke, help us out, Tommy. Give us a 7 10 conversion one time. He didn't care. He wasn't trying. That would have been the opportunity. 10th frame. No harm to do it then, but oh right. well. Well, all right. Pete Weber's turn to give us a little something here. Pete Weber, game two, PBA Fire Lake Tournament Champions, round three. Front nine. Let's call it 10. Pete second on the block, plus 637. 33 pins behind Norm Duke, who is on his pair. And Pete can jump right into first place here in the Tournament of Champions. With five games to go in qualifying before we get to the round of 24. Norm Duke with the front three, 4 10 conversion in the fourth, and three more strikes before missing in the eighth. Still can shoot 257. Count it. These are our three leaders coming into this final qualifying squad, Weber, Jones, and Duke. And now Weber on the front 10. And it was game two of yesterday's block when Weber heated up. 265 game two, 300 game three, 279 game four for an 844 series. And he's starting out really nice here in game two. Front 10 looking for 11. No question. Front 11 for Weber, and as we await his turn, here's Matt O'Grady, who can throw the back 11. Duke 
with another strike. So now all eyes in the bowling center on PBA Hall of Famer Pete Weber. Eighty-two, eighty-three career three hundreds on the PBA tour. Let's call it eighty-four right there. Game two, three hundred. Pete Weber takes the lead here in the tournament of champions, going into game three. <laughs> 